Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Kakodash, double honors to the apostles, elders, the great Muslim, never well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, and above all, back at it with a lust of the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Lord willing, this video is edifying. We conform to him. We conform to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh. We mold ourselves to the image of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh. Not vice versa. We are the Lord's woman, and the woman, she conforms to the image of her husband. She conforms to the image of man. Man conforms to the image of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai conforms to the image of the Most High, Yahweh. So if we're doing that which is pleasing in Yahweh Shai's sight, by default, we're doing that which is pleasing in the Most High's sight because Yahweh Shai has been given the judgment and the decree through the Most High, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You know, so and the point being that we have to conform in the Lord's image. We can't lean on our own ways and understanding. We can't try to do our way. We have to do his way. Same way how our wife is supposed to be subject to her husband is the same way how we are supposed to be subject to the Lord because the Lord is our husband, you know. And unfortunately, we played the harlot against Yahweh Bashem El Shai, all right? And we served out of God's. But now through Yahweh Shai's death and his sacrifice, reconciling us back to the Heavenly Father, okay? And with the whole creation and making everything at one, you know, being the Prince of Peace, being that governor, Yahweh Bashem El Shai has gave us the opportunity now to be his chaste virgins. And that's what it is in this, cru in this truth, you become a new creature. And you become a chaste virgin to Yahweh Bashem Shai. So a part of being that chaste virgin is conforming to your husband's ways. All right. And our husband, in a spiritual sense, is Yahweh Shai. And just like how we expect our Eve to conform to us, which they should. All right. And by, and by them conforming to us, that's their form of righteousness. Because, you know, the Lord, he deals with women, too. You know, now there's elect women and there's two third women, you know, and that's all that really needs to be said. So for you women who hope you're of that elect, elect number, put on as the elect. All right. And the women who are of the elect, you're supposed to put on as the elect, you know, which is your own spiritual qualities, which a part of those spiritual qualities is to be modest, be meek and quiet. You know, to be a uh, subject to your husband, same way we are supposed to be in, in our according to our lot. You know, because like Yahweh Shai said, there's neither Greek nor Jew, neither male nor female, right? So the Lord could deal with women too, but you have to be in your own particular order as a woman. It is double standard, okay? Because a woman does what a woman does, and a man does what a man does. You see, nonetheless, point being, we are the Lord's spiritual woman, okay? And even in a sense, Yahweh Shai, he, he is our father. You know, obviously we have the Most High Yahweh, but we're begotten through Yahweh Shai. All right, through the Spirit. Yahweh Shai, he's Isaac, if you can receive it. Isaac is the, is, the, is the forefather of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, who was the progenitor of the 12 tribes. You know, Yahweh Shai is considered a father as well. But the ultimate father is the Most High Yahweh. Okay, but Yahweh Shai, in a sense, he's also our big brother, too. You know, it, it's, it's beautiful, man. And he's our husband in a spiritual sense. You know, and that goes to show you the boundaries of the spirit, so to speak. Spirit passes through all things by reason of her pureness. <laughs> you know, you could liken the Lord to many different things in righteousness, though, in righteousness. But this is Revelation 19 and 7. It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come. The lamb is Yahweh Shai. Okay, the book of John tells you how he was the lamb uh, sent from the Most High to take away the sin of the world. And what world? The world of Israel. But ultimately, Yahweh Shai is going to take away sin, of the, sin from the planet Earth to a certain degree by reconciling us back to Yahweh Shai, the whole creation grown it. You know, now there will still people who will be technically sinning within the earth, but judgment will be going forth. 
So it's going to be a righteous earth. It's not going to be a wicked, sinful, adulterous kingdom like this world is now. Okay. Um, so that that lamb is Yahweh Shai and the wife, like it says, and his wife have made herself ready. That wife is the nation of Israel. Jeremiah 6 and 2, the Lord said he likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You see, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. OK, and we're going to get those new bodies, those new garments, those spiritual garments, you know, which we got the spiritual garments right now. But it's going to literally manifest us getting new bodies, you know, but these spiritual garments is this truth. All right. But we're going to be made pure. Like it says in Daniel 12 and 10, many shall be purified and made white. We're going to be purified, man. The Lord's going to purify us and he's going to destroy this flesh. But he's purifying us inwardly right now through the spirit, through the taking heed to these words. Like Scripture say, where shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to that word? Roughly paraphrasing by taking heed there too, according to that word. Uh, I believe that's a Psalms 119. Get it real quick. Psalms 119 and verse 9. It says, Wherewith Beth or Bath, wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? That's it. That's it. So we're cleansing our ways by taking heed to the words of Yahweh Shai. Like Yahweh Shai said, You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And this is uh, Genesis 1, verse 26. And the power said, the Allahim said, all right, Allah Hayim, because you go into the word God in the Hebrew, it's Allah Hayim, meaning powers. And that's why the reason why we, when we read certain scriptures, instead of saying God, we might say Most High, you know, or Yahweh Shmuel Shai, because, uh, like Scripture say, there be Lords many and gods many. So you got to make sure that you give the Lord glory due unto His name. You know, you specify which God that's talking about, so to speak. You know, and I say that because I had someone ask me today, you know, why do you say? Um, why do you say, why don't you say God? Like when I read certain pieces, I might say the most high. Well, we say that, you know, to specify which God. I should say there'll be God's many and Lord's many, you know. But nonetheless, everybody read how they read. Just uh, giving a little spiritual admonition. All right. And the Allah Hayim said, let us make man in our image. Notice how it says our. Our is a plural, plural word. So it goes to show you it was more than one entity. It was Yahweh Bashmel Shai ultimately, and the Allahim, the angels, the elect, they all had their part in the creation. You see? Those uh chosen spirits and righteousness, the aristocrat, the aristocratic uh spirits of righteousness. Okay? But man, talk about the Israelite man, is made after the image of the Allahim, meaning Yahweh Bashmel Shai, the angels. Because we're angels too. We're trapped in the flesh, though. So. But we can do angelic things when we cleave unto the Lord's righteous spirit. You see, we're made after the Lord's image, man. Okay? And it all starts spiritually, you know? Because image really is going into our, our way of life, you know? But also, in a sense, too, in certain scriptures, it can mean a literal image, like you looking exactly like somebody. You know, like Yahweh Shai, he's born in the image of the Heavenly Father. But it's spiritual and literal. All right. Next precept. You know, so woman's made in man's image. Man is made in Yahweh Shai's image. Yahweh Shai is made in the Most High Yahweh's image. So we have to conform to the Lord's image. We can't go up and be on our own path. Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh Shai, which is your reasonable service. So we're supposed to be a... Uh, a living sacrifice, meaning our lives are being lived through Yahweh Shai's spirit. We're being possessed, so to speak, on the right hand side by Yahweh Shai's spirit. Because, you know, because, hey, while you're alive, you live unto the Lord. Or even if you have to physically die in the flesh, you still die unto the Lord. Okay? Let me see if I get that real quick. Romans 14 and 8 says, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. 
And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's, right? Because even in a literal sense, if you die, you go back to the spirit realm. Your spirit gets received back to Yahweh Shemeshai, Revelation 12 and 7. You know, but that's what that's the thing. Knowing that, knowing that your spirit gets received back to the spirit realm, you're going to have to meet your maker one day. So when you meet your maker, you want to make sure that you meet him, you know, with a form of confidence that at least he might have mercy on you. You know, instead of living a wicked life and knowing that he's going to destroy you. But even to a, a spiritual sense, you know, we die. We die unto the Lord, man. We are the Lord's at the end of the day. All right. We have to set. We have to be willing to sacrifice and die for the Lord, you know, if need be. And that's going to be some members of the of the elect's lot to die, get their head chopped off in the guillotine, to die before Yahweh comes back. But nonetheless, they're going to be raised up with the house child first, man. The dead in Mashiach shall rise first. It's first Thessalonians 4. Philippians 1 and 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with that, but that with all boldness, I, as always, so now also Mashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. You see? So Yahweh Shah's life is supposed to be magnified in our bodies, whether we're alive or dead. We're, our, with these uh, vessels that we have, we're supposed to show forth that we are conformed to the image of Yahweh Shemel Shai in righteousness. Okay? Now it says, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Shemel Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh Shemel Shai, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Shemashai. Right. Okay. So don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed, be renewed in your mind to the image and be conformed to the image of Yahweh Shemashai, not unto our own ways. Because our own carnal ways, the scriptures say to be carnally minded is death. So if you're leaning onto your own carnal ways, guess what? You're leaning onto death, man. Like the Lord told us in Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Even as the heavens is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, saith the Lord. Roughly paraphrase. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Okay? You're supposed to trust in the Lord with all your heart, man. All right, don't lean unto Yahweh Shemel Shai. Uh, slack you, slip of the tongue, Satan. Don't lean unto your own understanding, you know? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You're supposed to lean unto Yahweh Shemel Shai, all right? Not unto your own ways. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones, right? It's going to bring you health. There's a recompense for serving the Lord. It'll be a righteous reward. Proverbs 28 and 26, it says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Right. So don't be foolish. Don't walk in your own ways, because the ways of a fool will lead unto death. Proverbs 14 and... Verse 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right? That's right, man. Absolutely right. Okay? So, don't get caught up in the ways of death. It's not about what you think. You're supposed to subdue your own understanding, like it says in 2 Ezra's. Second Ezra's chapter 14 and verse 34. It says, Therefore, if so be that ye, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive after death, ye shall obtain mercy. Exactly. So we're supposed to subdue our own understanding. And if we subdue our own understanding and reform, be renewed, be conformed to Yahweh Shemashai in righteousness, guess what? We're gonna be alive after death. The day of death, we're going to receive mercy after the day of death. Because when Yahweh Shai comes, we're technically going to uh, shed the flesh. You know, so we're not necessarily going to die, but we're going to shed the flesh. So in a sense, it's almost like 
you know, you do die, quote unquote, but you die to the flesh, but you're still alive, though. You see? And I know that might sound a little confusing, but think about it, right? Because if someone dies, they're shedding the flesh because their spirit goes back to Yahweh Shemashah. The scriptures say the Most High, he is the God of the living, not of the dead. You know, he's not the God of the dead, but of the living. You see? So their spirits are still technically alive, but they shed the flesh. So it's the same thing with us. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. And let's say hypothetically, you know, we stay alive to the day Yahweh Shemashah cracked them clouds and don't go to the spirit realm prior to that. We're going to shed the flesh, you know, it says for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. Right. All right. And that also proves reincarnation. It says, and then the names of the righteous shall be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Right. Absolutely. That's it. That's it, man. So point being, subdue your own understanding. Confirm your ways to the ways of Yahweh Shemel Shai. You have to draw near to his spirit. You have to draw nigh to the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shai. The Lord, he has a ruling class mentality when you think about it. You know, even though the Lord does have a, 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 um, a great form of humility as well. Okay. But Yahweh Shemel Shai, he has the, uh, the authority, so to speak, to be bold and to be lofty. Scriptures refer to him as the high and lofty one. You know, but the scriptures also say, what is man that thou humblest thyself to behold him? You know, because we're, man seems as if we are like an insignificant creature in comparison to all the glorious works of Yahweh Shemeshai. But the Lord still has a form of humility to look upon us, you know, and to direct us. You know, and that's the, and that's the beauty of Yahweh Shemeshai. This is James 4 and verse 8. But the point being, the reason why I'm saying all this is because, you know, the Lord, he is the most high. You have to seek unto him, not him seek unto you. You got to draw nigh to him. We need him. He doesn't need us. You know, let me get this real quick. Lord willing. Job 35, starting at verse, um, verse two, it says, thinkest thou this to be more, to be right? That thou saidest, my righteousness is more than the most highs. Right. You think you so righteous where the most high got to come to you first, <laughs> you know, or he has to draw nigh to you so you could draw nigh to him. All right. The most high, he'll stretch out his hand. But if you don't, if you don't, uh, pretty much take it soon enough hey you'll be out of there you know you'll be out of there man it's like someone who says hello to you every day even though that's all they're doing they're saying hello you know waiting to open up a conversation with you but you always ignore them eventually that person's gonna stop saying hello because they know that you're not gonna say it back <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So through the spirit, that's what the Lord is doing when he stretches out his hand. He puts the spirit on his men to reprove his people. That's the Lord saying hello, so to speak. And you got to answer the door. You know, like Yahweh said, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know what I'm saying? Revelation. You see? So, hey, you got to open the door. Yahweh is knocking, man. The Lord is knocking. It's, it's now high time to awake about a sleep, man. For now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. So it's time to answer the Lord's phone call. You know, like the brother said, you had a hundred missed calls from the Lord. Guess what, man? There's going to come a point where the Lord is going to stop calling, man. It says, verse three, it says, before his elect, he's going to keep calling for his elect, though. Because his elect going to keep calling upon him. Because the elect are going to draw near to him. And he will draw near to them. All right, it says, for uh, Job 35 and 3, it says, For thou saidest, what advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold, the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? Right. Okay. He says, thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man. You see? That's the point right there. All right? So the point being... Your righteousness may profit you and your wickedness may hurt you. The scriptures say, be not right over, uh, righteous over much. The scriptures all say, be not over much wicked. Okay? Neither be thou foolish. You know? Why shouldest thou die before thy time? All right? And be not righteous over much. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? You have to have that perfect balance when it comes to uh, serving Yahweh Shemeshach. Because we are in the flesh, you know? This is James 4 and verse 8. It says, draw nigh to Yahweh Shemesh. And that's why we're longing to be changed, man. 
We loathe this flesh and we're longing to be changed. But Yahweh is going to change us. James 4, starting at verse um, 6, it says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, Yahweh Shemeshai resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to Yahweh Shemeshai. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to Yahweh Shemeshai and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see, so we have to draw nigh to his spirit. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your, your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Yep. That's it. Beautiful. Yapa. Yapa, man. Okay. Yapa. Yapa. All right. So, hey, you know, Lord willing, this video was edifying, man. I want to get this one last precept if the Lord allow. This is kind of like a little precept to bounce off of a... Uh, Draw near to Yahweh Shemeshai. This is First Chronicles twenty eight and nine. It says, "And thou Solomon, my son, know thou the power of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever." You see, so if you seek the Lord, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he'll gonna cast you off forever, man. Sirach also tells you that. Sirach, the fourth chapter, you know, if you, uh, it pretty much, if you don't, um, if you go aside from wisdom, she's going to leave you over to your own ruin. I think that's Sirach 4 and 19. All right. But hey, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, HaKadosh, double honors to the apostles, and all those great Muslims that were well, peace, and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, and the Papa Ball.